And, and when I look and read and see what's going on in Germany now, I'm just astounded. And I have been in touch with people I know, like some West German people. And, and I say, well, what's going on there? Let's talk about this. I wrote to one. I said, I think this was a year ago. I said, you know, I think Wagenknecht coming out of retirement, I think she's right. You've got to make peace with the Russians. And, you know, it's just, they're your neighbors. And he wrote back, he's a sociologist. He wrote back and he said, she's just the marginal figure of no consequence. And also, I do not want to talk about this with you. idea and we are seeing the idea coming up again you know that we need to protect society from the bad yes. ideas from the wrong ideas from yes. from from the propaganda from the outside and those are then the people who end up doing pretty horrible stuff to their own to their own population but i'm getting ahead of myself because okay. um, let's let's focus again on like um, 2014 when you went back and then these people okay. had 20 years to think about and you you were the one who talk, told me a term that i was not familiar with that in east germany a lot of people call reunification actually the abwicklung so the yeah. the unwind uh, un uh, Yes, unwinding, but in this context, it rather means something liquidation. That, well, liquid in American, it something that has already been decided and then it's just being executed. You know, the execution yes. of something that's already the oh, done okay. in this in this instance. So, and I wasn't yes. aware that East Germans would call it like that, and but they they told you this was how they think of it now. Well, some of them did, not all of them. Uh, they, but they they all said. Um, they, it's it's not it's not an Einheit, it's a takeover, mm -hmm. and we we have been taken over, and we have no power to do anything. And then some said to me, "This is an Abwicklung," and and they, it's it's a different difficult word to translate, I think. But liquidation, if if you say that to an American, they would understand. Uh, well, you could say corporate takeover, liquidation. Yeah. Um, Americans would yeah. understand that American English, yeah. Yeah, and it 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 also in, entails the idea that it is a done deal, in a sense that yeah. this, this is very yeah. disempowering. Yes, well, the the Wissenschaftsrat for the and at Humboldt it wasn't called Wissenschaftsrat, but uh, same thing. They had these panels and they went through and they basically at Humboldt. They basically emptied the place, um, and then who who took the professorial positions at Humboldt? Western scholars. There was an oversupply of Western scholars in West Germany, so they got the jobs in East Germany. Okay, uh, the struggle for Humboldt in itself was interesting. I didn't focus on it, but uh, that was going on. So. But almost all the universities in East Germany were emptied of East German faculty and replaced with West German faculty. And of course, the Academy of Sciences in East Germany was shut down. And as I said, initially, one third were given reassignments. And then slowly, over time, contracts would run out. Um, a lot of these people went into things like selling insurance, <laughs> um, a few became cab drivers. Some left the country. Uh, some who were well known left the country, um, but only a few had what I would call really fulfilling academic careers in the Western system. The you know this is is a is a highly fascinating case study because that's what happens to a state that ceases to exist. It's not yeah. only the state that's gone; it's the institution that's gone. That's the people yeah. who are filling these institutions who are then being who who have to leave. It's also intellectually they have to go because they lost, yeah. and that was the mentality at the time. And yeah. I do think that what happened to South Vietnam after North Vietnam won is probably probably much more violent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. East German takeover wasn't violent. Um, so West no. Germany gobbling up East Germany wasn't violent. And actually, actually, the FDR tried to help and right, tried to to um, get the get get the economy going again. 
yeah. uh, and so on. But it, it took a long time. And there's a lot of people who on a personal level actually had to suffer through this disappearing of the old system. Yes. And, and but there even was, uh, there was a try hand, um, this, um, because all the, everything was owned by the state. Yeah. So the, the FRG created a try hand. Actually, mm. the first director of the try hand was murdered sitting in his living room. Someone came up to his living room and shot him through in the chest. This is how angry East Germans were about the Treuhand taking over. Uh, basically, they took over. So the, West... the liquidation office, literally, as in the sell off. Yes, that's Treuhand you it, do when you sell assets of a of a failed. Exactly, <laughs> they they took the East German assets and sold them to Western interests. That's when the, the general public began to turn against and Ost, Ostalgi, Ostalgi, the nostalgia, nostalgia, nostalgia yeah, yeah. Uh, began to appear. Uh, but I, I, I didn't really study that. I was focused on, on the intellectual class. But they were, it, it, even in 2014, when I re interviewed them, they said, yes, it was terrible, uh, blah, uh, and it was not done properly, but they were philosophical about it. They said it really couldn't be done any other way because that they basically said that's human nature. And a couple of them even said, you know, if the East Germans had won, we would have done the same thing to the West Germans that they did to us. <laughs> we would have upgewickled them. Uh, so they were quite philosophical about it. Um, and um, well, that's that's it. And um, it was a fascinating time to be there. Uh, and it was a fascinating to listen to these people. And I think one of the reasons I got along with them so well is I grew up in an Eastern European community in Detroit. It was Polish community, mm -hmm. very much like the East German mentality. The frugality, uh, the sense of community, but yet the frugality um, and almost austerity and the outlook, sort of the stoicism that they had. Uh, so I found myself feeling very at home with them. Uh, and they, you know, they would ask me, are you a typical American? <laughs> I would say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so yeah. what else can I tell you? They, no, it's, I, I would like to ask you how you think okay. of, of what this is doing today, because yeah. we often forget that the, somebody who would, would have, who, somebody born in 1949 by now lived for a longer period of time in the GDR in East Germany than he lived in the BRD, like in today's Germany, mm -hmm. right? It, yes. it has only yes. been, it has only been now 33, 34 years yeah. since the reunification, Abwicklung, mm -hmm. whatever it was, happened. And we still have a very large portion of people, even people yes. of my age who were born, I'm born 85, they were mm -hmm. born in, in East Germany in the GDR. And of course, this then changes over time how you perceive things. But yes. um, as you look at Germany today, how do you think that this that this being having been divided is still influencing them today beyond what we already oh, have talked about? Yes. Uh, well, um, I know that the hope of the West Germans at the time in 1990 was the the adult generation of East Germans will mature and die out and their children will become West Germans like us mm -hmm. to a large extent. I think that has not happened. And uh, partly because of or maybe largely because of the economic conditions in, in the former GDR States, uh, the conditions are not good. Um, and partly because that culture, the East East German mentality has been passed along. Um, it's clearly, like I heard Sarah Wagenknecht, uh, I listened this morning, she was interviewed by Glenn Greenwald. Mm, wonderful. And yeah, and uh, and she said, well, you know, the base of my support and the base of support for the AFD is East Germany. 
And those are the people who are most uh, alienated from the current uh, government in Germany and feel that that government has gone astray. I, I had a friend, East German friend, uh, who was very left wing, um, supported the Palestinians. When, when I went there in 2017, we marched in Berlin, support for the Palestinians uh, and other things. He's with the AfD now. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, this, the, 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 thing, the thing is, the AFD is today the party that says, let, says let's not go to war. Let's not have a war yeah, with Russia. Yeah, the, let's de this is great the irony. The Greens and the this... Reds and the, and the CDU are the ones who say like, no, no, we need to send as many weapons as possible. Yeah, they, they're the warmongers. And Zara said that too, <laughs> in this interview with Greenwald. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, also this, this um, eagerness to can't, we say cancel culture here, you know. Yes what that means, or this to censor people. Like right now they're arresting students on university campuses. Um, in, in many cases, I think for no apparent reason other than they want, they support the Palestinians. Um, and so, yes, this, this willingness, this natural tendency to use the government to suppress and oppress. And that's why I use the three theoretical perspectives I did in the book. And the main one, Pierre Bourdieu, mm -hmm. because he talks about power and, and the competition for capital in the field, which simply means the structure of society and the habitus, what's inside our head, habitual ways of thinking. And so if, if you don't have the right habitus, and symbolic capital, you are going to suffer. And one of the ways is you will be stigmatized. Um, and and you, I know you interviewed a woman, a German professor, a week or two ago. She Ulrike lost Gerold, her job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is happening here, too. Uh, there are people who are afraid to speak, to speak up, uh, to use the G word. I don't want to say it because G-E-N-O, you know, that word about what's happening in Palestine. Uh -huh. G -E -N -O -C. Genocide. Yeah. You can say it yeah, on this channel. Word. It's fine to call it genocide. Okay. It is a genocide and it will be remembered yeah. as a genocide. And yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And you say that here and people are, well, Pascal, it's, it's just, I don't want to talk about America, but, and, and when I look and read and see what's going on in Germany now, I'm just astounded. And I have been in touch with, People I know, like some West German people, and, and I say, well, what's going on there? Let's talk about this. I wrote to one. I said, I think this was a year ago. I said, you know, I think Wagenknecht coming out of retirement, I think she's right. You've got to make peace with the Russians. And, you know, it's just, they're your neighbors. And he wrote back, he's a sociologist. He wrote back and he said, she's just a marginal figure of no consequence. And also, I do not want to talk about this with you. And that was it's, it. I'm having exactly the same experience right now um, with mm -hmm. a, a Swiss historian who did the same to me, and it happens to me over uh, right now. And I had right now from the, the Austrian state broadcaster did a, did a little hit piece in the radio and saying like, oh, mm -hmm. this Putin puppet and so on. And yeah, yeah. One, <laughs> the thing they have in common is also that they say we don't want to talk to you. We do not yeah. wish to have a real conversation and certainly not one that we broadcast because it would be uh, sin entleared, empty of any meaning to do that. Yeah. And yeah. this is a, these are intelligent people. And this is yes. happening in front of our eyes. Yes. Well, in this person's case, he's an extremely well-known sociologist in Germany. I think it's cognitive dissonance. He doesn't want me to say things that he would he wouldn't really have an answer for other than some propaganda line, which, which, um, which of course means that you have internalized that propaganda, that worldview. Mm, so it is an yeah. internalized sense of knowing what's right and what's wrong, and the, the dividing lines are clear and go forward. And it's yeah, and uh, uh, and and a couple of others I've contacted, they they just refuse to engage. Mm -hmm. 
just uh, don't want to talk about it. Um, so uh, I think things are very difficult in Germany now. I don't know where they go. Uh, I saw, or at least I heard of one poll that said Wagen Connects party might get as much as 20% of the vote, which is astonishing that's coming up. There's an election coming up, what, in the fall or something? Uh, she'd be happy probably with 10%. Um, and the AfD, I know they've had internal problems, but uh, they're still strong. And of course, the SPD, is, I don't know where they're going other than no. down. The interesting thing now is that, that there's cognitive dissonance also among the population. And the, the old voting patterns don't work anymore because these parties yeah. don't represent anymore what they used to. And we have a realignment. Right. And at the same time, we have like strong ideological push towards yeah. certain certain narratives and this is yeah. a very dramatic time again very dramatic and it's gonna we don't know what's gonna come out of it but no i am glad that you worked on this um this this perception of east germany because this germany as always is, is one of the linchpins of the of of western of western europe right just because of its size and economic yeah. Importance. Yeah, absolutely it's going to yeah. impact european politics over over yes. the long term and and I think, I think there's a real possibility that the impact of East the East German Weltanschauung or 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 outlook is now coming to the fore, and uh, in in the AfD and in this Wagenknecht party, uh, those are those are East German mentalities that are that are working, and. Uh, I don't believe in this horseshoe theory. You know what I mean? The horseshoe theory of politics. Yeah, if you go far enough to the left or the right, they meet and they're the same. I don't believe that because there's significant differences between AfD and Wagenknecht, but they overlap in this skepticism about the government, the belief that the war in Ukraine is an imperialist war. Uh, but they're certainly different in terms of programmatically, who 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 they speak for, I think yeah. I, they, to the extent I know about them, they can still get in bed with the corporate interest, and Wagenknecht is is a kind of a classical working class party, uh, concerned yeah. about the workers. Um, at yeah, at least for now. And you know, the, the interesting thing is that the counterattack from the centrist parties or from the establishment parties is that. Um, if these two work together, it's a proof that both of them are are frauds, and it's a, it's a, yeah. it's an it's an attempt to divide any kind of yeah. possible coalition yeah. among opposing forces, which is a yeah. very classic strategy. It's one that even yeah. naturally evil, uh, comes out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it comes naturally. Mm. Yes. So I I things are bad here too, uh, but I think things might be worse in Germany, uh, also because of the energy issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I now know that Germans are paying uh, a little less than twice what they were paying the Russians, but their this dependence on American natural gas is is well it's 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 Wahnsinn. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, uh, and so I'm hope well, I, I don't know what I'm hoping for, because I think we're actually in a state of civilizational decline, if I'm really honest about this. And um, that we, we there's a chance to get through this, of course, humanity will get through this. But uh, also the, the quality of the leaders that are now both in America, but sticking with Germany, I think the quality of the leaders, ruling leaders in Germany now, I know better than what they had in East Germany when the, you know, Hanukkah was old and then he got replaced by this fellow Egon Krenz. And, and I talked to some of these people who were well-placed in that party and they said, at the end, we didn't know what we were doing. We, uh, the decision to open the wall, to go back to that a minute, was a helter-skelter, last-minute decision. Oh, let's open the wall. They'll go to Germany. They'll go to... West Berlin and they'll go to West Germany and they'll they'll eat some bananas and then they'll come home and go back to work on Monday morning. That's what they thought was going to happen. The wall was supposed to be open for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, they they 
uh, were just confused and, and, and worn out. Um, and they had old leaders like Honecker uh, with old thinking. And that's sort of, well, we don't have old thinking now, but uh, in Germany, you have people, in my view, who basically they're puppets. Talk about puppets. They're puppets of the United States. They do, you know, uh, what they want. And many of them, I think this Habeck and Baerbock. We, Bear we, 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 ha we had a moment two and a half years ago when the leader, the chancellor of Germany, stood next to the president of the United States. Yeah. The president of the United States said, well, we're going to end your little... Yeah. Uh, infrastructure project whenever we want and yeah. he just stood there and took it he just stood there yeah yeah he said we'll bring it to an end i guarantee you uh and these people like habeck and Baerbach have been trained they're davos people they've been given these these um they belong themselves to an elite group right it's yeah stipends to study in yale and and, 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 yeah. and then and then uh, a making of an epistemic community that is yeah. actually quite good at being in in top positions so yeah. yeah i mean we are going through a decline i agree and unfortunately we are nearing the the one hour mark so is there okay. one more thing that you would like to bring across well um uh, i'm i think it, it gets worse before it gets better um but i do have a faith that the, the, I'm very encouraged by Wagenknecht coming out of retirement because, you know, she tried this Aufstehen project five years ago. Do you know about that? When she was still with the Linka, Aufstehen. Oh, and it, it went, well, you haven't heard of it. It went nowhere. But now uh, she's, she's popular enough to be attacked. Uh, and I think she's articulating things and can draw people back from AfD because polling shows that a lot of the people went to AfD because they had no alternative mm -hmm. and they might go back to a party like hers and the struggle, th this election coming up will be very important because if her party does grow and even the AfD, then uh, the other centrist parties will be weakened. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I do fear... I have great fears about the, whatever you want to call it, the, the oligopolists, the power elite, the 1%, uh, the, the imperialists. They're not going to give up their power because they think they should. It has to be taken from them. And I hope it can be taken from them nonviolently. It has to. It has to. That's the thing. The Germans did very well, well in non-violently like ending East Germany and reunifying. Yeah. I hope yeah. that the next the next turnaround will be one where small voices will be taken serious the way you took them serious. So, uh, Dan Benars, thank you very much for your time today. Okay, Pascal. Thank you. Good night.